Well, maybe I told a fib. Welcome back to the PLC Professor Presents How to Program a PLC, Volume 1, Point 3, which would be the fourth segment. At the end of the third segment, I said I didn't know if there would be a fourth. But as soon as I was sitting there watching it, I goes, oh, I know what I forgot to do. I did this all with internal bits. I didn't use any file 0, file 1 memory locations, which would be actual inputs and outputs that you would use with a real PLC. So I'm going to do that. And the other thing I did not do was uh, rearrange the logic for the uh, up and down control circuits so there was only one stop instruction instead of one in each rung. Now really that's not going to make a big difference. But I did want to show you the actual I.O. addresses, memory locations. <clears throat> so this was the electrical diagram and this is the logic diagram and you, if you look you see they're very close. So you got true if on, energize forward, true if on, energize reverse, then you have stop, up button, limit switch, interlocking, contact 2CR, 1CR, which runs the motor forward or up, and then you have the other half of the circuit, uh, the push button to down, the limit switch, the photo eye, the interlocking relay contact, and the relay itself. And then you have the logic to uh, 1CR and 2CR that triggers the timer. And when the timer is enabled, 1T goes closed. But then if 1CR and 2CR are both off, the timer does keep 1T closed for whatever the program length of time is to keep the light on until you get out of the garage. And of course, the last wiring rung for 1PE, we don't need to show power for the field device in our logic diagram. So there's our logic diagram uh, and it's other than the stop button and the way we did the timer it's almost identical. So let's open up RS Logix uh, 500 or RS Logix MicroLite starter and make a few changes. Well welcome back. I guess we are going to have a part four, segment four. B1.3 and we're going to uh, replace some of the internal bits that we're calling B3's with I's and O's, inputs and outputs. So we'll just start right at the top. The first one is the motor up. That would actually be an output. So we, and by the way you see we're offline. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just type in a new address memory location O zero slash zero okay and that is motor up and this is motor up that's a description you can put the same description on many different memory locations but not the same symbol or address okay so there's an actual output to run the motor up and we'll make this one 0, 0 slash 1 and call that one motor down well we capitalize the up so we'll capitalize the down okay that uses up two of our four outputs that we have on our little MicroLogix 1000 so if we go on down the list here, we got one more output. That's the light. In other words, we want to turn on the light in the garage. So output 0 slash 2. And we'll name it different. Overhead. overhead illumination. You can go, you know, five uh, rows of text high. You know what? Let's just keep it to overhead loom. 
Okay, that takes care of all of our outputs. Now let's go back up and do all our inputs. Okay, stop push button, that would be an input. So um, I zero slash zero. And that was stop push button. <clears throat> then we got an up push button. I zero slash one. Edit description, up, push button. And we have a limit switch. Boy, I hope we don't run out of inputs. I zero slash two. Up limit switch. I know I didn't keep the same name, but oh well. Now remember, in an electrical circuit, this would be an actual relay, but it's just a bit in memory here. So um, we'll just drag this address down here. We put the mouse on it, drag it down to the Mimi, and it's good. Now we can be clever. I oh, know we'll just type it in. So we used up 0, 1, and 2. So this would be I0 slash 3. Down push button. Edit description. Down. Well, I guess we should keep it consistent. And this is the down limit switch okay now what you can't see is when I right click there it's going off the screen. See, find all, change instruction type, edit symbol. Right below there that you can't see is edit description. I just noticed that. I have my screen adjusted for 1280 by 720. Um, I might have to think of that through in the future, do something different. Okay, do we need any more inputs? I think we're good. That's good, we didn't run out of inputs. Now we're gonna download this. Comms, system comms, select our processor, download. I don't wanna do a comment, I could do a comment there, but I, I don't do those. But when you're doing this, you might wanna type something in just for grins, smiles. You wanna download, yes. You wanna to change to the program mode, yes. Downloading, downloading, downloading. Writing data tables, internal files. Change back to the run mode, yes. Go online, yes. Now, we're in the remote run mode, and all of the, all of the switches are off, so if I turn on, okay, the stop button, okay, that needs to be See, I've got normally open buttons on my little hardware demo, demo here. I don't have a normally closed like you would use for a stop button. So I have to start with it on <laughs> to simulate a stop push button that's not push. So if I push the up button, oh, I'm up limit switch isn't made, which is two. So, okay, there we go. And so if I push the up push button, then back off, see the motor's going up. And then when the, um, so we'll scroll down here. You see we've got illumination because it's on its way up. Okay, so now we'll take in, the, the door is moving slow, that's why we got all this time. So now, 
I will toggle input to the up limit switch off. The motor stops. But if you go down, you can see that we still have light. See the timer timing? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. It times out. It's done. The light goes off. And until one of these goes false, or both, and then back true again, the timer won't start over again. Okay. So now the door is in the up position. Okay, what I didn't do was the down limit switch, which is number four, that would actually have become true the minute the door started going up. So now if we do the down button, which is three, but in the meantime, if I hit the stop button, the whole thing stops. So you can see it works. Uh, I had to lean away from the microphone for a minute when I was operating the switches, so I hope that didn't uh, <clears throat> show up too terribly in the recording. Now the other thing we're going to do, and to do that we're going to go offline. So go offline, it's going to want to save maybe, nope. Is we want to get rid of that, It's there's only one stop push button, but we have it two places in here. So I'll show you how you do that. I'm going to select this wrong, and I'm going to go up here and grab one of these bad boys and drag it around to here. Okay. Then I'm going to drag that up there. That up there. Drag that up there. Drag this up here. And then around this, I'm going to put a branch. And I'm going to drag this up here. Whoops. Need the whole thing. Not just the memory location. Okay. And then if we go down and look at what's left here, we'll delete that. And verify it. So see, now we have one stop push button that affects both of these power rungs. So it's really one rung and all we did was eliminate um, an extra instruction to make it look more like the electrical circuit. Okay, the only other thing that I mentioned we might do, and I will have to save that um, for another part, would be using the alternative push button method where you have one push button and then when you push the button, the logic looks at what's what the current state is, and then it decides what to do. So we're going to leave this go for right now. Hopefully we can come back and add another section. Thank you for watching the fourth segment, Volume 1.3. Remember it started 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, .1, and this was 1.3. Uh, there may be a 1.4, and what we would do in the fifth segment, 0.4, would be to write the code, the ladder logic, that allows you to use one push button instead of three push buttons. I mean, after all, um, those push buttons are about $50 a piece, industrial type, maybe more in some cases. So if you can save $100 by writing a little extra code, so be it. However, uh, lots of folks like a, a green button for up, a red button for down, or a black button for down, and a big red mushroom head red button for stop. Just so it's uh, quicker for operators who are using the controls to make a decision and hit the right button. But uh, I probably will come back with a 1.4, V1.4, which will show you how to write code to use a single push button to do all three, up, down, and stop. Again, we appreciate you, uh, your attention watching these videos. They're unscripted, unrehearsed. I make a few mistakes. I hope you don't get too confused. And again, um, if you haven't, watched all the lectures, uh, you should do that. If you haven't uh, got
gone through the labs and the manual, you should do that. Now, if you're already an experienced programmer, I don't know why you're watching this anyway, other than grins. Uh, certainly not for my occasional stupid humor. Anyway, y'all have a good day, and we'll catch you in the next segment.